Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Blood Rage. <laughs> is it the silent roar? All right, Blood Rage is a game, a new game from Kumi or not? Was kickstarted to great acclaim. I mean, it was like almost made a million dollars, I think, on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't care about any of that. All I cared was I saw some cool miniatures. But even that's not that big of a deal. But I saw that Eric Lang designed the game. This is actually a remake, sort of, kind of, partially, a little of an old game he made called Midgard, mm -hmm. which I was not a huge fan of. I enjoyed it. I just felt like that game was missing any kind of epicness to it. It just, you kind of went around, it was, it was very Euro-ish. It was a wash, rinse, repeat kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. So this one here is a very big change from that. And in it, Ragnarok is happening and you are trying to get the most glory. You don't really care if your guys die, in fact, Dying is encouraged in this game often. It'll be very <laughs> profitable. <laughs> Let's take a look and we'll tell you what we think. The game has many different regions around the center region, each or so. And four, well, several of these regions are going to be destroyed over the course of the game. Some will start destroyed based on the number of players. So you will draw from a pile of discs. This tells you this one is destroyed. This is destroyed. It's out of the game. It's gone completely. Over here on this board, you can see there's three errors in the game. And it shows which three are going to be destroyed next. And in fact, on the board itself... This one's going to be destroyed next, so you put kind of a doom token there. It's going to be destroyed. And if players are in that region when it is destroyed, they get glory points for, I mean, dying in Valhalla is the most spectacular thing you can do, or dying in the Ragnarok. Uh, then you get sent to Valhalla. You can see Valhalla up here. Each player chooses a faction. We got the bears, the raven, the serpent, and the wolf. Each faction comes with a pile of miniatures. You have eight regular miniatures. You have one leader miniature. And then you also have a ship miniature that you can use. Um, so these miniatures, you know, let's take a moment and look at these. You can see the detail on the miniatures is really well done. These are miniatures that are just honestly asking to be painted. In fact, each of the different... You know, see that there's little bases you can snap on the bottom to show their ears, but each of the different clans has two different models. They really don't do anything differently besides the leader. So players will get those and their player board and get ready to go. The first part of each of the three ages, players are going to get these cards. They're going to get eight cards that are dealt to them from this deck. They're going to look at these eight cards and they're going to pick one and then they're going to pass the rest to the next player. And they're going to keep drafting till they have a total number of cards that they're going to be using over that age. Now you'll notice there's some stats here on here. At the beginning of the game, each player starts with a token on rage, axes, and horns. And these are going to move up through various ways over the course of the game. The first one is rage. Rage is up here. There's another track for rage. At the beginning of each round, you're going to get a certain number of rage. And essentially those are action points that allow you to take different actions. Axes shows how many victory points you get when you win a battle. Starts at three, goes all the way up here to eight. And then horns is how many units you can have on the board. Everybody can have four, but you can get up to ten. Also, at the end of the game, if you get your token to this spot or this spot in the, in the different rows, it will give you an extra ten glory and twenty glory if you get it all the way to the end. So players are going to take actions in turn order, and each action may cost some of this rage. Some actions don't cost that. One of the actions that you can do is you can play an upgrade card. If you've drafted an upgrade card, you can play upgrade cards in the appropriate slots. You have three upgrades for clans. So like, for example, this one here says, if you win a battle, you can keep one of the cards that you have. This one here says, gain two glory for every figure you reach from Valhalla. Or here you can pay a rage to prevent a figure from being destroyed. Each of these has a cost. You also start with a spot for a ship, but you have a ship upgrade. 
Here you gain 8 glory every time one of your ships is destroyed. Over here you can have leader upgrades. You start with a leader, but here if you successfully pillage with your leader, raise one of your clan stats by one. You have down here basically a warrior upgrade. My warriors can now all be two strength. And then, most fun for me, you have monster upgrades. I might be able to get a fire giant now, or a dark elf. Now, when you take one of these, you get a monster on your team. You thought the other miniatures were cool? These are even cooler. I mean, look at these guys. Amazing sculpts. When you get a monster on your team, you basically add him to your, your people that you can pull now. You put one of your bases on him. You have large bases for the, the large monsters and small bases for the small monsters. And you can have at most two different monsters and each of those monsters has special abilities. Another action you can take is invade. Invade is basically bringing a guy from your reserve onto the board. Now leaders can invade for free, everyone else you pay whatever their strength is. So if you have a warrior with a strength 1, they might come on the board. If I bring on the fire giant who might have a strength of 4, basically then I would have to pay 4 to bring them on the board. When you bring them on, they can come on in any village in an area that is basically not destroyed yet. This area here is destroyed. If you bring on a ship, those ships go in a ford. That ford that you put the ship in is essentially in both the two places that it's next to. And there's also the one monster also can go in one of those spots that's next to different areas. So you're placing these down and that's another action you can take. You can also pay one to move people from one spot to another spot as long as there's empty. You'll notice Yggdrasil has no villages and basically as many people can be in the middle there. And then finally, you can pillage an area. So let's say I have a guy here in the middle and I want to pillage Yggdrasil. I can pillage any spot, but whenever you pillage a spot, each player can move in for free anybody who's from an adjacent spot. Every player then who's in the spot that you're going to, now some spots, let's say I pillage here, there's only one spot, so only one person's gonna be able to move in. But each person who has, each player who has somebody in there, whether it's in here or maybe a ship that's next to there, is going to add up the power of their people, but they also get to play a card. Now, there are different ways. These are the cards you use in battle. There are other cards that you can use which would count for nothing. You can play them as a bluff, or there are actually upgrades that you play other cards for different battle strengths. And many of these cards you play will do different various things. There's even a few of them that you can play after the battle. Oh, I'm still losing. I'll play these cards. Whoever has the highest strength is going to win the battle, and they are going to get points that, that is on their, their sheet. Now, if you're the one who started the pillage and you win, then you will pillage the area. You'll take this token in the middle and flip it over. And then whatever stat it shows there, and if it's Yggdrasil, it's all three stats, you will then increase those stats on your sheet, which will give you more abilities that you can do. Finally, an action you can take is you can play a quest card. These don't even cost any rage to play. You just place these face down on your board. At the end of a round, you're going to reveal any of the quest cards that you have there. And if you accomplish whatever it says in the card, for, so for example here, you want to have the most strength in one of the yellow provinces or one of the most strength in the gray provinces. There's different things. If you have those, you're going to get that many glory points. So once again, during each age, players are going to start by drafting cards, then they're going to take actions. Once you're out of uh, rage points, you can no longer take actions, even if the action has no rage points. Once everyone's done, the round ends. Then you discard down to one card if you have any cards left over. You reveal your quest to see. Then the one region is destroyed, and everyone in there will get glory points. Uh, and it's in the first one, two glory points for each person. Then we release Valhalla. So as time goes by, all the stuff that's destroyed goes to Valhalla. But this stuff will then come back to those players. And then you go to the next round. After the third age, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now this may be redundant asking this at the beginning, but what do you guys think of the components? <laughs> oh, it's my turn. <laughs> Uh, the models are off the chain awesome. The detail that is on even the smaller ones is amazingly well done. The, uh, everything else was meh. Hmm, that's actually fairly in line with what I was going to say. Uh, Cool Mini or not, it lives up to their name with Cool right. Minis, and they are spectacular. Everything is well made, everything looks good. 
uh, everybody has actually more figure types, more models than they need because you know because of Kickstarter and stretch goals and whatever. Everything else, the board is fairly drab looking. The cards are really tiny. They're like small sized cards. I wish they were a regular standard sized card. I know that you have to play them on your mat. I think you're answering your own question here. You're answering your own complaint by saying they're small, but they have to be that small to fit on that board. They could have made Unless the board was bigger. They could well, then you would need board. huge well, boards. Saying, right? I don't like that they're tiny, and uh, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on Sam's camp here. The miniatures are amazing. Everything else is okay. Right. Our artwork is phenomenal. Uh, I, I really like the artwork, mm -hmm. and it don't 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 gloss over that. Um, but the cardstock was not as good. Uh, I, I actually liked the way the board looked. Um, I was okay with the board. I was thinking more about the the player boards and the actual cards. All right. Well, listen to me, dear listeners, because they're both wrong. It's the components are perfectly fine, and the miniatures they were right on that are astounding. I will say that they are the best miniatures I've ever seen in any game. Period. I have no. I've never seen better miniatures than these. Um, the phenomenal. The the the. Just you look at the cape of the guys and the, on the bears and every detail. Games Workshop can take lessons from these guys. So, no, I'm... I'd I'm, say they were on par with Games Workshop. I didn't have to put these together. So, um, but they're really cool looking, and I, I think the board is perfect as is because if it was any more, it would distract from everything that's on it. Okay. Uh, but anyway, gameplay itself. Now, I struggle with the category of this type of game because I, it's not really a Euro game. You're trying to get points in it, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of back and forth. There's battling and stuff. It's mm -hmm. kind of a hybrid style game. Right. And it's in the same group of whatever you put Cosmic Encounter in, I would think. The game has so many things I like. It has drafting, which I love. Right. Okay. It has um, the variable player powers. Not at the beginning, but as time goes by, you're you're different than everyone else. How you right. put them out there. Right. It has that combat that pretty much uh, very similar to Cosmic Encounter. You have three. I have two. We both play cards. We add them to our scores with the possibility sometimes of even adding more cards. Sure, okay. So, I love I love all three of those things, and they work really well in this game. But I think what ultimately makes this game and gels all those parts together is that drafting, which is ultimately a very Euro-type mechanism. Well, I'll be careful now, because drafting was out in Magic, I think, before anything else. And drafting is not a Euro mechanism. It's a card thing. Okay, fine, but it's it feels not like... Cosmic, where it's hey, here's seven cards. Some of them are garbage. Spend them all. No, I, I, I'm you not saying I mean? I'm not saying it's the same game as Cosmic. I just say I put it in the same grouping, whatever grouping Cosmic is in. If you like games like Cosmic Encounter, right. you will like this game also. I guess so. I guess so. But again, I think that drafting makes everything gel, and it's ultimately the most important part of your turn because you're you are building out your turn while you're drafting. The drafting is everything. It lets you know, you know, what upgrades you're taking, how you fight. Where you fight and why you fight there. It's everything. It's really interesting. I mean, I, I love that aspect of it. And the, the fighting is, it's neat because it's quick and makes sense. You go in there, you play the card, people might jump in, which is also interesting. And, and it's clean, it does its job well, then the game continues. You don't get bogged down in the fighting. Which some games in this vein forget the game and just go fight just fight for 20 minutes fight and then when you're done fighting you go wait what was i trying to do again this game does not suffer from that at all it's really well timed everything hmm well you like drafting yeah i do like drafting I, i'm just i'm still hung up on the throwing this in with cosmic uh did not make that connection at all uh well the combat Oh, listen, okay, I think you're getting hung up on that. I'm not saying this game is like Cosmic Encounter. I'm saying it will appeal to the same fans. If you like Cosmic Encounter, you will like this game. I'm saying if, that. If you like Cosmic Encounter for the <coughs> mechanisms only. But if you like Cosmic Encounter because you're a sci-fi fan... All right, well, come on, we're getting so hung up on that. What about this game itself, the drafting? Oh, it's it's good. I mean, I, I like drafting. It uses the drafting mechanic that... Uh, that uh, many other games use, and, and that's one of the reasons uh, I like it, because it is very similar mm -hmm. to those other drafting me mechanisms that, I, that I've, I've uh, utilized in the past. Um, 
Uh, I do, one of the main things I like about it is that it's kind of a twist. Um, most combat-oriented games, which I think this is, uh, focuses on victory. Mm-hmm. This right. one doesn't. You don't have to win the battle in order to get the points that you wanted to get out of the battle. <laughs> right. Sometimes you, when you, you lose, can, you're like, you can thank you. You can it uh, <laughs> very purposefully and get actually more points than the person who won the battle got. Right. Right. And, and that's one of the nuances with this combat system that I like about it is that uh, you don't have to win. The Loki strategy is... is right, it's uh, very much about setting yourself heavy. up to, to, to lose. die when right. someone comes up against you and get points that way. Yeah. Or I was... Uh, one of the games I played, I was uh, setting myself up to be crushed when Ragnarok came around and get a bunch of points that yeah. way. Yeah, so that's, that's what won you the game. Right, that's right, right. That's what won you the game. Right, so it's interesting that it's not just two armies clash, winner does better than the loser... That's it. It's, mm-hmm. There's nuance here, right. and it comes through in that drafting also. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's picking, picking that. god cards that are um, that are synergistic. You know, that it's there's there's a lot going on in the game. It seems perhaps looking at the game, looking at the miniatures, you go miniatures game, fighting. It's a good Not game so. underneath. All the plastic. Yes. Well, it really supports multiple styles. If you'd like to go in and be the guy who has big creatures and kill people, you can do that. You can do if that. If you want to be tricky and try to maneuver things, you can do that also. And if you want to just lay low and get points by being in certain areas, you can do that. And I think mm-hmm. I think all three of those are valid strategies. Right. There's also area control in it, too, depending on depending on the cards that you want to, uh, you want to play. Having the most power in... You know, uh, Midheim or you right. Know, if one you of those for other, the, if you go for the quest, different regions. While you're drafting, you can right. go for the quest. Yeah. Right. So there's there's multiple paths to victory, and I think they're all pretty pretty well balanced. I mean, the game that that uh, we played with Eric was a uh, pretty except for except for Jason. Um, <laughs> Jason was way in last place, but the 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 three of us were all pretty close together. Right. And the other interesting thing is that all those paths are fun to play. Right. Yeah. It's fun to be the guy who goes, oh, you're attacking me? Oh, okay. Psych, I want it to die. You know what I mean? <laughs> and be the guy who crushes everything. And be the guy who slides in there at the last second and goes, I'm in here too. Guess what? Mm-hmm. All all those different ways of winning or trying to win are fun and engaging. And that's that's right. great. Well, what are your final thoughts? I'm, I'm a big fan. This is not my style of game normally, but... It does take a lot from the styles of games I like and brings them together and then gives you all this goober and all this plastic and a great theme. I do love the theme. Mm-hmm. So I got to go with two rusty axes up here. All right. I am definitely in on this one as well. Uh, the Viking theme hits right at home for me. I, I love the Viking theme. And this one is really thick on it too. This yeah. is not. This is not some... Uh, you know, veneer or anything like that, man. This is a fur coat of theme uh, that that's on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, two bear helmets up. All right. Well, it, there's very little that I could say that. I mean, you would have to. I'd have to scrape to think of something I didn't like. I love the miniatures. I love the fact that it's not a very long game, mm-hmm. and yet gives you a full experience. I love the drafting. I love the combat. I love the sneak surprises. I love the the special powers that everybody has. Um, for me, I really think this might hit my top 20 games of all time. That's how much I like it. It is like wow. the, it's the perfect package. I designed a game for Tom Vassell. That's what it feels like. And for that, I have to give it three Viking beards up. I'm not sure why they're up, but hey. Nothing's <laughs> Chuck Norris. You move his beard, there's another beard. Ah. Uh, well, anyhow, that's Blood Rage. It's coming out very soon. Get it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>